Bibles tonight to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I want to minister a message tonight basically called Deep Calleth Unto Deep or Deep Crieth Out to Deep. And we'll use the set of scriptures in the book of Psalms for that. But I want you to take a look here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. In verse 2, Paul says, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. So I want you to notice the attitude of Paul. When he said he was in fear, it wasn't, it wasn't satanic fear, because God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind, but it was a holy fear, a holy trembling, because he had a revelation that he was going to give an account to God everything he preached. We need that revelation today. And I was with you in weakness and in fear of much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. We need that, Lord. We need that more today than ever before. That your faith, listen, that your faith, that your faith, our faith, should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So our faith, our foundation is built on the reality of God's power. How bait we speak wisdom among them that are perfect or mature, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princesses of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a, what? In a mystery. So it's a mystery. Uh, and there's many scriptures that says that the, the, the carnal mind or the natural mind cannot understand the things of God because it is spirit and spiritually discerned. These are spiritual mysteries. They're the deep, deep, deep secrets of the kingdom. Um... How, how God operates, how, how, how God thinks, how, how, how God moves and, 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 and reveals himself. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Unto our glory. Which none of the princesses of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You know, for years I taught that was the demonic powers, but it's not. It's talking about those who were in positions of authority and power in his day and age. But as it is written, listen to this now, verse 9. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. So all that God has done throughout eternity is prepared for those who love him that's why i said on thursday the very first priority of a believer's life is that uh we take a hold of the first commandment thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart soul strength and mind and being but god hath revealed them unto us so when he uses this word us he's talking about those who i'll say it this way who are perfect or mature those who are pressing in those who want to know the truth those who are desperate those who are hungry those who want to go deeper, you got to go deeper to go higher. Say, go deeper to go higher. The deeper you go, the higher you can go. You know as well as I do, I, 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 I couldn't find it, but I was trying to find how deep is the foundation of the Empire State Building. It's 1,200 feet high. Uh, now they've got buildings over 2,000 feet high. Uh, but I know they say that a lot of these state, these empires or these these high rises have deep, deep, deep basements. They and I didn't know this. There is actually a river that flows through the basement of the Empire State Building. They went so deep. But if you don't go deep like a tree, a tree's got to go deep. The root system's got to go deep because if it doesn't, when the wind comes, I cannot imagine what the root system of the redwood trees are out there in Oregon and California. They're 200, over 200 feet tall. Can you imagine their root system? It must be incredible. It says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his, notice, by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth, what does it say? All things. Listen to this. Yea, the deep things of God <laughs> what <laughs> the spirit searcheth all things yea the deep things of God uh, maybe that's what Paul meant when he said I have not yet apprehended he hadn't apprehended all the deep things of God 
And, and it's not it's not a revelation that puffeth up. It's a revelation that brings you into a place of usefulness, a revelation that causes you to be able to become one with God, uh, to move with God, to flow with God, to walk with God, uh, to see God in all of his glory. It says the deep things of God. Let's read that again. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now, I personally believe what he's talking about is the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus said in the Gospel of John, he said, it is, it is absolutely necessary for you that I go. For if I go not away, then the teacher, the comforter, the Holy Ghost will not be able to come. But if he comes, he will teach all things to you regarding me and he'll bring all things regarding me back to your remembrance. So I, I, I believe it's the Holy Ghost is talking about here. He searcheth, yea, even the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. So when you think about what we were before we got born again and filled the Holy Ghost, we were a natural man and we could not know these things. We could not comprehend it. We could not perceive them. They're too deep. It's too deep for what we would call the geniuses of, 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 of the world. Those who are wise in the world. Now they can get born again and fill the Holy Ghost and they can get hungry and they can get desperate and they can begin to go deep in God and God can be reveal these things. But natural men don't understand these things. Come on, you lay your hands on somebody with the growth and, cu and curse it in the name of Jesus and it falls off. You lay hands on a person who's completely uh, has com is covered with leprosy and, and in the name of Jesus and it disappears. Or someone who's dead and, and, and you can't raise him back up. And like Lazarus, he has been dead for four days. And, 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 and God, within a matter of seconds, right? Milliseconds when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And here he came forth, completely made whole. Now we have not received, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we, why? Why did we receive the spirit of God? And verse 12, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. That we might know. See, you, you really, all that God has for us, all that God is, all that God has, can only be apprehended by faith. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, or faith cometh by hearing and hearing the know, knowing the will of God. So when the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to us the will of the Father, our faith begins to rise, and then we're able to apprehend it by faith. Uh, we're saved. How? How are we saved? We're saved by grace through faith. Faith apprehended grace. Faith apprehended a new birth. Faith apprehended all that God has. So all that God has for me, all the realities of who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, what we can do in Christ, it, it, it is ours uh, the, 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 the minute we get born again, but there's many that are not apprehending it. it, it, it you got to apprehend it. You got to take it by faith. Say, so take it by faith. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. We're going to preach this the way the Holy Ghost does, not the way that men do. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You know, sometimes we're trying to get natural men to understand the things of the Spirit, and you can't do it. Uh, all you can do is demonstrate it. Now, you preach the gospel of Christ until they repent of their sins and they believe the truth. And after they're born again, then you can begin to take them into these realities. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Or when you're really walking in the spirit, you're not too concerned about what natural men are saying about you. Now, remember, you're in the spirit. You're not in the flesh. <laughs> if we're in the flesh, we ought to be concerned about uh, what's going on in our life. For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, 
but we have the mind of Christ. Of course, now a lot of people say, well, the Bible is the mind of Christ, and I'm not denying that. But could the mind of Christ be referring to the Holy Ghost also? The mind of Christ? And because uh, the Holy Ghost, he teaches of all things and brings all things to our remembrance. So I, I got to think, and I like to think about who God really is and what God has accomplished. And, you know, I talked about how vast the universe is. There's trillions and trillions of galaxies out there. And he did it all in, in, in one day. He said, let there be in the stars and all that came into existence. So <clears throat> I did a little research and probably most of you know what the speed of light is. The speed of light is 186,000 miles a second. No, wait a minute now. 186,000 miles a second. So for me to reach the moon, if I was traveling at the speed of light, would take a minute and a, a second and a, 1.5 seconds. I could reach the moon if I was traveling at the speed of light, 1.6 seconds. That 1.5 seconds is how long it take me to reach the moon. Okay, so then if you take 31 million seconds in a year, right? Take 31 million seconds are in a year and times that by 186,000. Now, that's already left me way behind. Okay, so if I would travel for one whole year at the speed of light, one light year. So how big is the universe? So if you can imagine how wide, how tall, how big, how big. If you went from one part of the universe to the end of the universe, how many light years would it take you to get to what they figure is the end of the universe, which I don't think there is an end. But, you know, so if I'm traveling at the speed of light, one year, if, if 186,000 miles a second times 31 million seconds a year, if I'm a, a light year. So if I'm traveling across the universe and I want to go from one side to the other, it's going to take me how many years? It's going to take me 27 billion years of traveling at the speed of light well wait a minute 27 billion listen 27 billion years not million billion years to reach the other side of the universe traveling at the speed of light so you say, okay, Pastor Mike, is that supposed to impress us no hey, well I think it should really I really think you, you I'm glad you're sitting down but I feel like I'm going to fall in a moment. But listen, how big is our God? How big, how big is our God? And, and then we got to ask ourselves, are we apprehending? How much of God are we apprehending? How, Mike Yeager, Mike. Or I can say it this way. How deep am I in God? Well, how deep is God? The very heavens can't hold him, right? I mean, no, no, the heavens can't hold them. Now we've got a church generation that says, well, God doesn't do what he used to do. And yet he said, I am the Lord and I change not. And Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also and greater works than these shall you do because I go unto my father, which is in heaven. And so we're supposed to be apprehending. We're supposed to be apprehending God, who he is, what he's done, what he's made available. And we do it all by faith. So how, how deep uh, you can't get any deeper than God. <laughs> I mean, if the known universe, you have to travel at the speed of light for 27 billion light years and the heavens can't hold God, then how deep is God? Uh, for in other words, we, we need to really, we really need to want to go deeper. We, we need to see, you got to want to go deeper. Um, let me read what it says here in the Amplified, Job eleven seven. Can you find out the deep things of God? Or can you by searching find out the limits of the Almighty? Explore his depths, ascend to his heights, extend to his breaths, and comprehend his infinite perfection? Can you? No, you can't. There's no end to God. There's no end to his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding, his love, his mercy, his goodness. I mean, how, how deep, how deep am I in God? How deep am I in his word? 
I mean, you, you know, I look at this word and, and the word is so profound because you know as well as I do, you can take one scripture and meditate on that a whole year and never squeeze all the life out of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, a natural sponge, you dip it in the water, you can squeeze the water out of it in a matter of seconds. But can you imagine God is so deep? Look at, he squeezed out of a rock rivers of water to th quench the thirst of maybe five million people. No, no, God squeezed out of a rock water to quench the thirst of maybe, they say, a million to five million people. <laughs> I mean, how deep is God? How deep am I? How, how deep am I? You know, when somebody makes statements that like, basically they've arrived or they're sinless, they're sinless, you know, because anything that is not of faith is sin. Uh, listen, if you're sinless, I believe that would mean that you would know God to the fullest extent. That means there is no unbelief in you whatsoever, none. There's no unbelief in you. Now, we know that Jesus knew the Father. He, he, knew, he knew the Father. I mean, he, he, he knew the will of the Father. He knew the face of the Father. He knew the voice of the Father. Um, he, he wrapped himself in his Father. But how deep am I in the word? How deep am I in his, how deep have I gone in his love? Rooting and, you know, the Bible, that's what Paul said in Ephesians, that we might be rooted and grounded in love. Why? That we might comprehend what is the height, the depth, the width, the length, the breadth of Christ. That we might be filled with all the fullness of God. So that's what Paul was reaching for. I think that's what Paul meant when he said, I have not yet apprehended. When, when he said in Ephesians chapter 3 that, that, that we might know the height and the depth and the width and the, and, 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 the, and the length of God. To be filled with all the fullness of God. So there, there's a vision. There, there's a challenge. Now, why would we want to be filled with all the fullness of God? Why would we want to know the height, the depth, the width, the length? By how? By the Holy Ghost. And actually, that's what he prayed, that, that God would open up the eyes of understanding that we can overcome the enemy and set multitudes of people free. And if you want to set multitudes free, just set them free like it's nothing. Like it's nothing. Jesus said, if I cast the devil out with my little finger, he said, the kingdom of God has come to you. <laughs> you know, a lot of people treat the devil like he's, he, 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 you can't overcome him. He's, well, the flesh can't. Even the medical world can't. Technology can't. But you know what? A little believer can who's deep in God. <laughs> the deeper you go in God, the higher you get. So how deep am I in prayer? How deep I am I in obedience? How deep am I in faith? How deep am I in faith? You know, uh, there's 17 different levels of faith, but some of the astounding uh, declarations of faith, there's abounding faith, there's rich faith, there's strong faith, there's great faith, there's full of faith, and there's exceedingly growing faith. Is my faith growing? <laughs> How deep is Mike Yeager in faith? I'm not asking you. I'm asking me. How deep, how deep am I in my commitment to God? Look, think about this. We live in a world that's very, very, very shallow, isn't it? You know, I didn't realize how shallow I was until I got born again. But you know what? Think about this. And there's no pride in this. But when you get born again, immediately you, you are so far above the understanding of the mass majority of the human race, that it's incredible because you, 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 you see that God himself became a man, took your sins, died, and rose again, and he's coming back again. While natural, the natural world, they're spending literally trillions of dollars trying to find out where they came from, and you know where you came from. And you know where you're going. Can you imagine how much more brilliant we are than the world? Professing themselves to be wise, they'll be fools. I mean, come on. They're from monkeys. They're fighting whether or not the life within the womb of a baby, of, 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 of the, of the life in the womb of a woman is a baby. And they, they're, they, they're, they're not even, they're even saying, they're, well, it's not even a baby after it's born. I mean, you would say this, how, how, how can you, how, how can you be so stupid and still breathe? You know why? Because their eyes are darkened. Their hearts are hardened. They're totally ignorant. 
We're not trying to find the way. We found the way. We just got to get deeper into it. Oh, there's so much here. I'm just going to scratch the surface tonight. Is that okay? Just We're just going to scratch the surface of the infinite Lord, the never-ending, powerful Lord, the, the all-powerful all God. I mean, you know, there's no end to his wisdom. There's no end to his power. There's no end to his authority. There's no end to who he is and what he can do. We ain't seen nothing yet. You wait until after the thousand-year reign of Christ. Whoa, I'm telling you what, talking about fireworks, it's like creation was one fireworks, you know. But, but, but really, after the thousand years, I think we're going to see the grand finale forever. <laughs> I mean, it will be exploding everywhere forever, just going off. Just and, and, and God is so far beyond us. And he can only reveal himself to us. Um, the word uh, uh, deep, uh, it, 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 there's, it means profound, uh, unfathomable. In, I can't even say these words, incomprehensible. Uh, it, it says that thy judgments are a great deep in Psalm 36, 6. Thy judgments are a great deep. Thy judgments are great deep. Uh, you know, I, I told Stephen years ago that if he would take the book of Proverbs because he likes wisdom, and if he would memorize the book of Proverbs and then just meditate on it, I said, I, I would be afraid to open my mouth around him. <laughs> I mean, the wisdom. See, but it's not like as if God has to create the software for us to download in us. He's already given us the software. <laughs> He's, he just, see, we're, we're like the iPhone or an Android phone. The software has been created, but if you don't download it into you, it'll be worth nothing. It's like I shared the other day. I think it's a good illustration that uh, Brother Lester caught up and said, Pastor Mike, you got a refrigerator in the gym. It's gone bad. It stinks. I thought, okay, I'll, I'll be right over. He said, it really smells. And the food had was good food in there originally. So I got over there and opened up, and whoa, did it stink. Wow. And I had to pull the stuff out. And I got to looking. Well, uh, the compressor was good. Everything was good. Guess what happened? Somebody unplugged it. I think I know who the guilty party was. I think it might have been me. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. But guess what? When it, because I unplugged the refrigerator, what was in it began to spoil, go bad, rotten, and it began to decay to where it stunk. You know what? That's what's happening to the human race. We see this happening in America. When I was a child, they had Bible in the school. They had prayer in the school. But what happened? They unplugged it from God, anything to do with God, and now all that was good is beginning to turn corrupt and it stinks, doesn't it? It really does stink. So what you're going to have is you're going to have those who stink trying to destroy those who are still plugged in. <laughs> they, they can't handle it. You know what? When that refrigerator, do you know how I knew it was, something was wrong? There was no power because when I opened the door, there was no light. When the light went out, now I know the bulb could have gone out, but when the light went out, it revealed there was no power. And the, more, and the, the longer we're unplugged from God, the more we're going to stink. I've seen Christians at one time who were plugged into God, but for some dumb reason, for some insane reason, some trickery of the devil, they got unplugged. And the first thing they do is they stop going to church. They stop praying. They stop reading their Bible. They, start, they stop meditating on scriptures. They stop talking to the Lord. And all of a sudden, all of that good stuff that was in them, that God was doing in them, that wonderful, beautiful stuff that smelled like heaven begins to smell smell like dirty feet don't begins to smell like a rotten corpse doesn't it oh the deep things of god we need to go we don't need to unplug we need to plug in and go deeper we need to we need to go deeper in job 12 22 it says he discovereth deep things out of darkness he did god even know even the darkness to god is light there's there's nothing that is hid to god Everything is revealed to God, but now we've got a generation, uh, and, and, and you think about this, very, very shallow, very, you know, the deeper I go in God. Now, the world may think I'm just talking gobbledygook, 
you know, we're talking about uh, redemption and atonement and salvation and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We're talking about the fire of the Holy Ghost. We're talking about the presence of God. We're talking about grace. We're talking about all the wonderful aspects. We're talking about the fruits of the Spirit. You know, when I was a sinner, I never heard about the fruits of the Spirit, did you? No one ever. My dad and mom never talked to me about, uh, we might have used the word love, but we didn't know what it was. I love my dog. I love my cat. I love my mom and I love pizza. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't real love, but love and joy, unspeakable joy. Having not seen yet believing, you rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Joy. The other day I was trying to explain to someone who hasn't really, really seen Jesus yet. And I was telling him, when you really, really, really see Jesus, you'll fall in love with him head over heels and you won't be able to get enough of him. How many of you want to grab that? Uh, I can't get enough of them. Can't get enough. When we really see the real Jesus, right? Not, not, not another Jesus. You know, Paul said, though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel than that which we have preached unto you. Let them be accursed. I think Thursday night, I'm going to preach a message called the goodness and the severity of God. The goodness, the goodness of God if you continue and the severity of God if you stop and you will be cut off. That's what Paul said in Romans. We ought to preach that. It's in the Bible. But guess what? If you're, if you're not deep in God, you can't see that. The amazing thing is the deeper you go, the more you see. The deeper you go, the more you see. The deeper you go in prayer, the deeper you go in meditation of the word, the deeper you go in your commitment, the deeper you go in, 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 in worship, the deeper you go in, 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 in the truth, the more God opens up your eyes. Because he says that which you have, if you use it, you'll be given more. But if what you have, you begin to back off, you begin to back up, you begin to walk away, even what you do have will be taken from you. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen believers at one time who were trying to go deep and they were seeking, they were praying, they were hungering, they were thirsting, they were desperate and, and, and the enemy somehow got in there and they just began to back off and their joy that they once had, they lose it. Their love for God, they lose it. Their commitment, they lose it. Their faithfulness, they lose it. Their giving heart, they lose it. They just begin to lose it. See, you're either going to go deeper or you're going to go shallow. And the more shallow you get, the more trouble you're going to be. Superficial, living on the surface, onion skin. Y'all know what I mean by onion skin? Listen, when I go deep in God, my family knows I'm going deep in God. Uh, they, they don't have to guess it. They can tell when I'm going deeper in God. Why? Because the, the, they begin to smell Jesus instead of flesh. <laughs> they begin to see Jesus instead of flesh. They begin to hear Jesus instead of flesh. They begin to see God instead of the world. And, and when, when they begin to see the world, they tell me, Dad, now I think it would be good for them too because what's good for the goose is good for the gander. But Dad, you need to go deeper. Dad, something's wrong. You're not where you need to be, Dad. And, and you're making us miserable because you're miserable. <laughs> you know, if you're full of joy, you're going to bring joy. If you're full of fear, you're going to bring fear. If you're full of love, you're going to bring love. And the deeper you go into God's love, rooted and grounded in his love. Rooted and grounded in his love. Go deep to go high. Uh, and this generation is onion skinned. You just look at somebody the wrong way. You know, we were getting taxes from the local new tax collector and uh, our records kind of got mixed up. So I've been on the phone with him the last two nights trying to figure out. And next thing we, he, he told me is, and make a long story short, he said, well, you, you um, uh, and you made, ta you paid taxes on 607 Chambersburg Road. I said, I, I don't, we don't owe Chambersburg Road. Oh, uh, well, for the last two years, that's my records because he's a new tax collector. You've put out over ten thousand dollars on six sixty seven hundred uh, Chambersburg Road. And I told my, I said, man, we're going to have to get that money back. So last night I'm laying in bed. Lord, show me how to get that money back. And I told my family, I said, we got ten thousand dollars coming back. They've been charging us. And then uh, today I got up. When I got up in the morning, I got to looking and I found out that it was belo it belonged to. Uh, the Mormons, the Latter-day 
church of Jesus Christ. And also the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, now, son, you know, you couldn't find where you gave that money in your, in your, in your banking account, can you? I said, no. He said, because you never did. <laughs> he said, the tax collector is wrong. <laughs> so I got the tax collector on the phone with me tonight, and, and, and he's a little bit onion skinned, and he, he, he got aggravated with me, and I started laughing, and it kind of broke it kind of broke it a little bit, but so easily offended, so easily, so quickly offended. It says, uh, them that uh, it says, nothing will offend them that them that love thy law, nothing will offend them. <laughs> That's one of my kids' favorite scriptures to use on me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Easily offended. Uh, so we're talking about going deep in God, uh, going deeper in God. And, and now the word deep and we can't get very far on this tonight, but the word deep in Genesis 1, 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The deep is the same Greek word about the deepness of God, the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So the Holy Spirit is moving on the face of the waters, but you know it, the Holy Spirit couldn't do nothing until what happened? Until God spoke into the word went forth. The Holy Spirit is hovering over us, like over the waters. The Holy Spirit is wanting to take us deeper, higher, further, farther. He wants to expand our understanding of God uh, because you will know the truth. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free from all the lies of the devil. And then there is an amazing scripture in Genesis 7:11 that after 7:11, uh, after they had committed sin, and God said that's enough, and the ark had been built in the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventh day of the month, the same day, listen, were all the fountains of the great deep broken up. Now there's first the natural. That's what it says in First Corinthians. And then the spiritual. I believe that there's a lot of typology in the old covenant. I'll give you first the natural Passover lamb, and then the spiritual Passover lamb. Then first the law given by Moses, and then the dynamic law given by Christ. First the tabernacle in the wilderness, and then we become the tabernacles of God. You understand? Adam, after he sinned, could not be the tabernacle of God because the tabernacle has not been yet cleansed with the blood of Christ. Remember, nobody could go into the Holy of Holies until after the blood was shed and then only high priest once a year. We have become the tabernacles. We have become the Holy of Holies. And now God enters into us through the blood of the Lamb. So first the natural tabernacle and then the spiritual tabernacle. First the natural fire, right, by night and cloud by day. Then the spiritual fire by, by night and by day. Isn't that good? So first the natural breaking up of the deep. The deeps were broken up, right? Then listen to this. And then the windows of heaven were opened. So when there is a breaking of the deep in us, and what do I mean? It says, the deep crieth out to deep in Psalms 42, 7. Deep calleth on a deep at the noise of thy water sprouts. So there's, the, I don't know if you know this, how deep the ocean is. I don't know if any of you ever studied this, but the, the ocean, there's parts of the ocean that are eight miles deep. Now, now it's hard for me to comprehend that. Eight miles deep. That means from here to the other side of Gettysburg. That's how deep. And we've never gotten that deep. You know why? With the pressure. The deeper, listen to this now, listen to this. The deeper you go, the greater the pressure. So through the years, we've tried to go deep. Remember, the, remember any of the old World War II movies where they would take the submarine and try to escape from the Nazis dropping uh, the, the depth charges and all of a sudden they'd begin to go deep. You know, I don't know how deep they went. Maybe you would know. They began to go deep and all of a sudden their, their metal on the ship would begin to, uh, of the submarine begin to be crushed because of all the weight that was over the top of it, all the weight. I'm telling you what, the deeper you go in God, I'm telling you, the more pressure there will be. Why? Because the enemy is going to try to stop you. 
David is a good example. David's, you know, he, he, he's a, a man after God's own heart. He worships the Lord. Uh, Samuel goes, anoints him to be king. And, and we don't know, I think it was after that happened and the spirit of the Lord is upon him. He's enabling him. He kills the lion. So what does the devil do? I said the devil. He sends a bear. Then next thing, what does he do? Now he's got Goliath. And then what does he do? He goes out and kills 200 Philistines. And then what happens? His father-in-law, King Saul, the king, the king turns on him. And for 10 years, he chases him to kill him. And you can read in the book of Psalms all the pressure he was going through. <laughs> and if you come under any pressure yet, have you found out yet the deeper you go in God, the more hell is turned loose on you, but the greater your victories are? The deeper you go in God and you'll get to such a depth in God where you are going to be all alone. There'll be hardly anybody around you. They won't be understand. Even born again, tongue talking, spirit filled Christians. They'll look at you like you lost your mind. You don't care about money. You don't care about entertainment. Hey, they looked at, they looked that I'm telling you what Smith Wigglesworth was so, so deep in God. He was so deep in God to where people, I'm telling you what Lester Sumrall, he went to visit him when he was still a young preacher boy, 19 years old. He said, you would think that there would be a long line of people outside the door, young evangelist, like he was outside the door of his house. He said, no one ever went to visit him they, because he was so deep deep he probably scared them <laughs> you know you can go so deep in god you'll scare the devil you'll scare people people i mean people who love this world people who i'm talking about born again christians people who who, who still want this world and i'm not talking about you being a critical fault finding condemning self-righteous finger pointing person i'm just saying you, you go so deep in god to where all of a sudden you'll find yourself all alone like elijah did like Elisha did, like Jeremiah did, like Ezekiel did, like John the Baptist did, like Stephen, like Philip, like Peter. Uh, I, I was, uh, before I close here, because there's one, a couple of things I want to, uh, I just really want to go into, and then we'll get into it tomorrow. Uh, David said deep, he said in Psalms 130, uh, one, out of the depths have I cried unto the O Lord. Out of the depths of what? Your heart, of your heart, out of the depths of my heart. Oh, how I long for you. Oh, how I yearn for you. Oh, how I want you. So uh, uh, Thursday night, Brother Jimmy was here, and he's been listening to different ministers. It doesn't matter. And we got to talking, and he told me a true story. He said, Brother Mike, he said, I, I was listening to this well-known well -known preacher on a cassette. I'm going to school, he said, and, and, and I've got Lyme's disease where it, now it's a miracle he's walking because he was bedridden for 23 hours uh, uh, every day. He couldn't get out of bed for 22 hours a day. And he just kept on and kept on and kept on. I'll not give and I'll not get, let go. And, and, and that was some years ago. And now he's, but five years ago, he was so full of pain. And his daughter was doing some kind of recital at a large school gathering. I guess at that time, his kids were going to public school. And so he, he goes there. And he walks into this and he's listening to this well-known preacher, well-known. And as he comes into the building, lo and behold, there's that preacher. He couldn't hardly believe it. He's surrounded with kids and kind of like high-fying it. He's really cool. And, and, and he, he says, now, I'm desperate, Brother Mike. I am so desperate for Jesus. He said, I am so desperate for God. I need a miracle. He said, I walked up to the brother. He said, oh, brother. He said, I, I, I've been listening to you on this cassette. And I am so desperate for God right now. I'm so desperate. He said, he said it with great, like, anguish. I'm so desperate for God. He said, Brother Mike. Now, he wasn't bitter. <clears throat> he said, you couldn't believe what the man said back to him. The man got a big smile on his face. And he said in front of all the kids, began to mock him. And said, Brother, what do you mean you're desperate for God? You got all of Christ you can get. You got all of Jesus you can get. You're, you got all of it. Now, now, I'm not mocking the guy, but this is what's stopping people in the church from going deeper. We got to go deeper, guys. We got to go deeper. 
We can't accept this philosophy. I've got it all. I'm good to go. Well, didn't we get it all when Jesus died and rose again? Yeah, but you got to go deep into it. You got to go deep into it. Now that you've got it, dive into it. It's like having a swimming pool and, and, and saying, I've got the biggest swimming pool in, 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 in my community. Well, ha when's the last time you went swimming? <laughs> when's the last time you dived all the way to the bottom? <laughs> it's like I said, uh, you might have a pet elephant and you're supposed to eat the elephant. How do you do it? One bite at a time. Oh, I know. We ain't going to eat a pet elephant. Okay. I understand. So you buy yourself a humongous steer. How's that? You have them slaughtered, and now you're going to eat them. You got to eat them. You ain't going to eat them with one bite. But I could say, man, praise the Lord. I've got all the food you can imagine in my refrigerator. Well, what good does it do it if I starve to death? It kind of reminds me of this guy. It's a true story. Uh, back before they had airplanes and they would take uh, cruise ships across the uh, ocean to go from uh, Great Britain to America. And there was this guy who saved up all of his money. He was like Scottish. He saved up all of his money and, and he, got, he got a ticket. And, he, and, he, got, and he, he had a little backpack, right? And he had saved up all of his money. So he, he, gets, he gets there and he had a sleeping bag. And so, you know, he, he's kind of like, because he, he, he couldn't afford to buy a ticket that would include, you know, a room with the food and everything. And so he all through the journey, he's eating cheese and crackers. He's losing weight. He's sleeping in, 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 in the gallows or in, in, in the hallways, you know, hiding from people. And when they finally got there, as he's going ready to go down a gangplank, one of the one of the servant guys, one of the butlers said, sir, can I can I talk to you? He said, well, yeah, he said have we offended you? He said, what do you mean? He said, sir, we've noticed you've never come to the banqueting table. What? He said, yeah, you never came to eat with us. He said, not only that, but I go to your room every day and I, I notice you never slept in your bed. Uh, the soap, everything is the way it was from the time we left port in Great Britain. And the guy said, well, that's because I couldn't afford a ticket that would cover those things. He said, oh, sir. He said that was included in the prize. <laughs> Oh, it's so terrible. So how many people are living this life as Christians, but we never apprehend the power, the nature, the character, the personality, the presence, the glory, and it's ours. It's ours, brethren and sisters. It's ours, not sisters, sisters. It's ours, say it's ours. But you got to take it by faith. Um. I, I, I just, can I go a little bit deeper here? Yeah. Can I go a little? Okay, thank you. Okay. Will you give me 10 minutes, Pete? Give, give me, okay. <laughs> Kat, Stephanie ain't going to give me no more time. I want to read this to you. 2 Corinthians 3.18. 3.8. I'll get in 18. I'll get into it tomorrow. Listen to this now. Listen, and I just want to give you some thoughts before we close. But we all, with open face, Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. But we all with open face beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord. Now we know the glass is the word of God. It, James, be doers of the word, not hearers. Listen, are changed into the same image. <laughs> From glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So look at, so as I'm looking into the glass... Right? As I look into the glass, the glory of the Lord, because the Holy Spirit's taking the word and he's doing what with it? He's quickening it, right? So I'm looking in the glass. I'm looking in the word. I'm looking in the truth. And the spirit of God is taking that truth and he's quickening me, right? He's moving in me. He's speaking to me. He's leading me. He's guiding me. He's giving me dreams and visions. And what is that doing? You're being changed into the same image like Jesus you're taking on the image of Jesus I was going to talk about how you pickle eggs tonight but that's that that's tomorrow <laughs> how do you pickle an egg it's got to get swallowed up with that special formula of vinegar and beet juice and spices and it's got to stay in there until it saturates first you got to strip off the outer don't you 
and then it permeates and it permeates and it permeates. I think there's been times Kathy pickled an egg and I took one out and I cut it up and, and, and she came in and, 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 and she, and I said, honey, this egg don't taste any different. It tastes like a regular hard boiled egg. I said, honey, I just pickled it. You got to let it sit in the juice. You got to let it soak. You got to let it be swallowed up. When do we take on the likeness, the image, the character, the personality of God? We got to be swallowed up. We got to go deeper. We got to go deeper. Say, I got to go deeper. So I just had some thoughts. And this is, I was sitting there meditating. The deeper we go, the higher we reach. I said we're like a seed that when it is planted into the ground, and that ground could be the will of God, deep, rich soil. First thing that happens is the moisture, which is symbolic of the Holy Spirit, begins to cause the exterior of that seed to loosen up and it feeds the life inside. And the life on the inside of that seed begins to expand. Do you know what the life inside of a seed does? The very first thing it does. What does it do? It reaches down. It puts its roots into the ground. And as it puts its roots into the ground, it begins to reach towards the S-O-N, towards the sun. And as it continues, the roots keep going deeper. I did a teaching one time about the Chinese bamboo. Oh, an incredible story. We'll get into that another time. I said this, most believers are scratching out a living on the surface of life while others are diving deep to discover the real mysteries of life. <laughs> Listen to this. Most believers are scratching out a meager living on the surface of life while others are diving deep to discover the real mysteries of life. How about you? You're going to be one of them? Yeah. I said this. I believe we can go so deep in Christ and in his word that we no longer are alive to ourselves. But it is Christ living in and through us. Don't you think so? I know so. We, I believe it can go deep, so deep into Jesus Christ and his word that we, it's no longer us that live, but it's Christ that lives within us. The, listen to this. And well, maybe we'll close with this. The apostle Paul went so deep into the heart of God to where he reached into the heavens. And when people saw him, they knew in their hearts that if they could just simply get under the shadow of his life, they would be healed. That's a deep thought. Think about this now. The apostle Peter went so deep into Christ, into the very heart and the word of God, to where he reached into the heavens, that when people saw him, they knew in their hearts that if they could just get simply underneath his shadow, that they would be healed. <laughs> and it says, and they were all healed. Now, if Peter could go that deep, get that high, can't this Peter? Can't this Howard? Can't this Mike? Can't Stephanie, Stephen, Kathy, and all of the multitudes watching? Can't we? Let's go deep. Pastor, I go deep and I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. Matter of fact, the pressure gets turned up. You're right. The pressure is going to get turned up. You're going to make the devil nervous. All hell's going to turn loose on you, but that's okay because guess what? Uh, it's not a yellow submarine, by the way. <laughs> Jesus is with you in your submarine as you go deeper and deeper to discover the mysteries of the kingdom. And it's not coming from here. It's coming from the Holy Ghost who lives in here. So, Father, I thank you for blessing this word tonight. May it be quickened to us, and may it produce the results that you so desire, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.